creepypastas, a relic of the early internet, and a storytelling genre slowly fading into obscurity. These horror stories thrived during the late 2000s and early 2010s, as they often blurred the line between reality and fiction. The best creepypastas often include an image or a video to add to their authenticity. And the more obscure they were, the better the experience. As the internet became more commercialized and mainstream, the popularity of creepypastas diminished. Now people have taken it upon themselves to revisit the past and unravel the mystery behind these stories and their media. For example, the original Smile Dog images are being recovered, as well as the screams used for SuicideMouse.avi. But there are plenty of others that are currently lost or even unknown. So, let's journey into the strange world of lost creepypastas. During the late 2010s, people began discussing online a lost creepypasta known as Camera Heads. On the creepypasta subreddit, a now-deleted post brought the mystery to attention, and it described the Camera Head story as having elements similar to an ARG, including documents and images. The post reads, quote, The story follows a man who discovers a torn backpack and books everywhere while walking. The character finds the backpack, which has a tape, a broken camera, and a letter that says, I killed a camera head. The character investigates what may have happened, but finds out he is being stalked by creatures called the camera heads. The character slowly descends into madness as he looks further into what the camera heads are. The only image associated with this lost creepypasta was this screenshot from 4chan in 2014. Descriptions of the camera heads themselves vary from person to person. They are sometimes seen as human-like with cameras for eyes, allowing them to record and stalk their prey stealthily. In other depictions, their entire heads are replaced by surveillance cameras. In one instance, they were described as biotechnical with an alien-esque figure. So what happened to the creepypasta? According to the Reddit post, 4chan users archived the story on their fan-made wiki known as Xenopedia, meant to document stories from 4chan's X or Paranormal Board. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen drama, the admins overhauled the site and eventually took it down. Much of its content vanished alongside with it, including camera heads. By the time anyone noticed, it was far too late. Thankfully, there are a few archived screenshots of Xenopedia via the Wayback Machine. One of them, from August 2009, shows their page of stories under the bullshit category, reserved for those that, quote, grew annoying through oversaturation or just started off being shit. Listed is the page for camera heads, which would have contained the story, but unfortunately, no archive exists. As the mystery gained popularity, online investigators began to work.
One of the most significant discoveries came from a 4chan thread in August 2020. An anonymous user comments, quote, So guys, I have a question for you all to confirm. Were videos indeed used in the creepypasta camera heads? We have statements that had images and documents since it had elements of an ARG. I ask because I may have found something of extreme interest. This video, simply titled Camera Head, was posted on August 8th, 2009. It has the following description as it is written. Weird video I captured from a mini DV I found in a goalie near my house. This video is fascinating. It was indeed posted in August of 2009, a few days before the archive screen capture on the Xenopedia. Most of the video is just static, but there are some brief images throughout it. At 15 seconds, there appears to be some creek or pond. At 1.15, we can see some swings. At 3.45, we see this. At 7.25, we hear some strange noises before a face pops up. And finally, this thing pops up towards the end of the video. Given the video's age, content, and description, it almost certainly was part of the original creepypasta, yet the uploader is a complete mystery. The channel's name is Kodiakov, and it has no other videos, comments, or even information on its about page, which makes contacting them impossible. For a long while, many assumed that the story was far more expansive than what was available online. After all, those who recalled it frequently compared it to ARGs, which are pretty immersive forms of storytelling. All speculation ended in October of 2020, when Lost Media Wiki user Marnin005 found an archive link to Xenopedia's recent changes page. Within this was the transcript of the full original story. If this is a little hard to discern, we can exclude all the text editing jargon and read, quote, Camera Head is a paranormal entity described in a single post on X and in a subsequent YouTube video. Since its upload on YouTube, the video has been found to contain additional random clips of alleged spirits or ghosts observing the viewer. X, what's a camera head? I was walking home through a nearby gully and came across a weird stack of rocks and a torn envelope with some writing on it. It appeared to have been written in charcoal or ash. It said, I killed a camera head. On the next line, it took Trevor. And the last line, get help if I don't come back. And there was a mini DV nearby. This was all that was on it, besides static. Though I had to watch it a few times before I found this clip. Who took this video? A camera head? Sounds really silly if it's a monster with a camera for a head. A few hours after the initial post, the original poster managed to deliver the following video uploaded to YouTube, claiming a few minutes of static had to be cut due to YouTube's length restriction. 
unquote. Furthermore, an archived 4chan thread from 2012 was found, which seemingly expands the camera head's lore. According to this Anon, quote, The first X thread on the subject that brought the subject to light was a barely coherent story about a boy finding a note saying, I killed the camera head. He took this to signify an actual slang. So here we have a 4chan user from 2012, only a few years after the original story, claiming that the camera head's creepypasta was an incoherent story that involved a note being found. This description matches up precisely with the transcript on Xenopedia, a simple story about a boy finding an envelope that says, I killed a camera head. Moreover, the Xenopedia page mentions a mostly static video that had to be shortened to fit YouTube's upload restrictions, which conveniently matches up with the camera head's video shown earlier. The only error is the dates. The Xenopedia transcript claims that the creepypasta was posted on August 8th, 2008, while Kodiakov posted the accompanying YouTube video on August 8th, 2009. This discrepancy could have been a simple mistake, albeit one that was entirely overlooked and easily fixable. Due to these findings, the camera head's creepypasta is generally considered to have been found. As it turned out, there were no other elements to the story, and those describing it as an early ARG might have simply misremembered it. Kind of anticlimactic when you think about it. But considering it was in Xenopedia's bullshit category, perhaps the story was so low effort that 4chan users immediately dismissed it. To some, calling the back rooms a creepypasta might seem strange, but in my opinion, it fits perfectly. It originated on 4chan, like other well-known creepypastas, has an attached image connecting the story to our world, and has exploded in popularity. Fans have expanded on the lore of the back rooms, creating additional levels and monsters, and developing indie games and films based on the phenomenon. But now that everyone's had their fun, it's time to dial back and investigate its origins. For the back room specifically, the mystery is twofold. Where did the image originate from? And where is the first post? Let's begin with the basics. On May 14th, 2019, an image appeared on 4chan's paranormal board showing the inside of a yellow-tinted, empty building. The caption beneath it read, quote, If you're not careful, and you no-clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old, moist carpets, the madness of mono-yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum humbuzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby. Because it sure as hell has heard you. The story's vagueness leaves a lot to the imagination. While I'd love to explore the different levels and beings in the back rooms, I'm here to explore something just fascinating. As previously stated, the post that started it all was created on Sunday, May 14th, 2019. However, this is nowhere near the origins of the back rooms. Two days prior, a thread on 4chan was created asking users for images that just feel off. Attached to this was the famous image of the back rooms, and a later comment supplied its description. 
Due to 4chan's anonymous nature, no one knows who first posted the image, nor can anyone claim responsibility. To this day, no one knows where on earth this picture was taken. But there's no shortage of rumors. Theories range from the photo originating in the back of an old, abandoned Sears to being computer-generated and not an actual location. Finding where the backroom's image was taken is near impossible, as the only person who truly knows is whoever took the photo. So that begs the question, who took the photo? And this is where our search began. More than a year prior, on April 21st, 2018, the backroom's image appeared on a 4chan thread without any accompanying text. Despite this being the earliest known appearance, the image's metadata doesn't provide much helpful information. And I have to give credit where credit is due. YouTuber Virtual Carbon and his community took up the case and did some insane detective work into the mystery. Using JPEG Snoop, a program that extracts information from images not normally found, he uncovered a list of cameras that might have taken the photo. These cameras are all from the early 2000s, and their base resolution matches with the image. But what is perhaps even more noteworthy is a discovery of an earlier appearance of the backroom's image, this time on 4chan's B or random board on April 7th, 2018. This might not seem like much, but take note of its file name. It's actually a Unix code, or a string of numbers that, when converted, gives us a date of Sunday, July 15th, 2012, at 6.45 p.m. GMT. In fact, when we look at the previous backrooms image from 4chan's paranormal board and convert its Unix code, we get April 8th, 2018 one day after the post on 4chan's random board. It's likely that this Sanon downloaded the image from the thread on B and posted it a few days later on X. That, in turn, means whoever posted the photo to B likely downloaded it from a third 4chan thread on July 15th, 2012. Not only is this earlier thread currently lost, but it could give some answers as to where the backrooms are located Maybe this lost post was a green tech story, or a scary experience involving an office. However, like the Jeff the Killer image mystery, please be wary of false leads and hoaxes. It's incredibly easy to Photoshop a mock-up backroom's image, and many people have. This is one of the most challenging mysteries due to how little information there is, and the overabundance of false and useless information. For now it seems, the origins of the backrooms is, fittingly, a mystery. Who doesn't love a good Mario game? With how memorable and nostalgic the series is, it's unsurprising that a creepypasta based around it would form. But this one, simply titled Mario, came with a unique twist. The story takes place on SMW Central, a website dedicated to creating custom versions, or ROM hacks, of video games, primarily of the 90s classic Super Mario World. On December 28, 2012, a moderator of SMW Central named Adam came across a strange hack called Mario. Its description was vague and incoherent. 
There were no credits, and only one screenshot of the game. Curiosity got the best of Adam, and he downloaded the ROM. Strangely, the download included an odd text file that, when opened, had this in it. While the body is mostly gibberish, the top line of the text repeatedly says the phrase, Find me. Booting up the game reveals everything as mostly normal, until the introduction message pops up, informing us that Mario is the antagonist. Welcome, this is Dinosaur Land. In this strange land, we find that Princess Toadstool is missing again. Looks like Mario is at it again. As Adam traverses through the ROM hack, he encounters dreary levels and cryptic messages. One of which reads, Victim number one, eyeballs were unable to be found. The victim was found lying on her carpet. Causes of death unknown. Hand marks with unidentifiable fingerprints were found all over the corpse. After reaching the game's sudden and abrupt ending, he posts his findings to the SMW Central, which would later turn into the creepypasta. At the very end of the story, however, the website's owner, Kieran, examined the text file and converted it into an image. And this is what it showed. While this could just be an unsettling looking image for extra spooks, the face's appearance roughly matches the description for victim number one, as many have pointed out. As such, this image became known as Mario Victim Number One. So, where did it come from? When prompted on the Creepypasta subreddit, a now deleted user claims, it's a GIMP Photoshop of some band member. It was proven to be fake by the creator on X after the image was posted like wildfire. The original file name of this is 125601 And it had a stale ass copy pasta that was tagged along with it, saying, please don't download this image it may contain mp3 files, including a virus, or something like that. Alongside his comment was a link leading to an archive 4chan thread, which seemed to corroborate his claim. Reminder that years before this image was used in the Mario creepypasta, it was used to troll X by a guy attempting to advertise his band. How is it used? Just curious. Anon said that the image just appeared on his desktop. Then, as the thread went on, set sound files started appearing on his computer and posted them for download. Sound files were samples of his band. Some people started playing along, saying after listening to the sound files, the image appeared on their desktop as well. And listening to the sound files caused them to feel ill slash dizzy. This caught on like wildfire, until OP came clean and admitted it was all a hoax. So, that's one explanation. And with enough Photoshop, you can transform any picture into anything. The being in the image is definitely human, so this seemed plausible. YouTuber Midnight Crick investigated the mystery and came up with an interesting theory. According to his research, the image originated from this still, from the Japanese horror video game Fatal Frame. Upon first glance, it looks pretty similar. The same angle, the sunken eyes, and open mouth are all present. And it's not difficult to see why many believe this. However, Midnight Crick would later recant this conclusion, and labeled his video as outdated, claiming that a reliable source came forward 
to show that the image is a real person's face. This sounded interesting, so I reached out to Midnight Crick to ask for more information. According to him, he got in contact with the band member from 4chan mentioned earlier. This person, named Jordan Davis, stated that he did indeed create the image, and that he might still have the original in an old hard drive, but hasn't had the chance to find it yet. Based on Davis's claims, Midnight Crick created these bullet points. Source image was likely of only one person. Image was cropped by Davis. Found on Google Images. Face edited mostly via high contrast and low brightness. Low quality added via Nokia phone. Red color came from old GIMP algorithm being bad. Face of original was black and white. Crack on face, not an edit, presumably. As a side note, a different channel named Chainmail Chaser, who investigates classic creepypasta images, discovered a YouTube video from 2008, which strangely uses the image. The video is now deleted, but it notably predates the Mario creepypasta, and even features some of the same writing. And that's where the search currently stands. Crick has hinted at a future update video, so until more information comes out, the Mario victim number one image will remain a mystery. Gurgles and Bugman might not be a well-known creepypasta, but the image accompanying it will surely ring a few bells. Let's briefly start with the story. It stars an unnamed character recalling something strange he found on TV during his youth, the Gurgles and Bugman show. Gurgles was described as a clown with pitch black pupils, crazy curly hair, and a tall skinny figure dressed in a suit. Bugman was short and round, with a dark cape, eyes covered, and a vertical mouth. The show itself started the two performing pranks on unsuspecting people. Quote, It would always start with Gurgles and Bugman hidden away at someone's house. Gurgles would face the camera, staring at you, his bony finger touching his lips. Once their victim fell asleep, Bugman would crawl out and gently climb in beside them. His jaw would open sideways, and now would come a sharp straw that he stick in the person's neck. Gurgles would make faces at the camera while the audience laugh, and Bugman would use his straw to drink from the person's neck. When the victim stopped struggling after a few minutes, the laughter would turn to claps and cheering. With Bugman finished, Gurgles' face would fill the whole screen with his impossibly wide, sharp-toothed grin. Then he'd whispered, See you again soon. The way those all black eyes pierced through the screen always gave me the chills. I hated the show, but would be always too afraid to go near the TV while it was running. The story ends with our main character learning that one of his classmates died from a stab wound in his neck. The TV used to watch the Gurgles and Bugman show was later discarded and their whereabouts are currently unknown. Accompanying the story is, presumably, an image of Gurgles though his appearance does not match up entirely with the creepypasta's description. Whatever this image is, it became a popular screamer in the following years, similar to Jeff the Killer. Although it never reached the same level of popularity as Jeff, there has been no shortage of investigation. One of the earliest analysis of this image 
came from fellow YouTuber Scare Theater. According to this video, a Facebook page existed called A Henna Barbus Hennacide that used the same image from the Gurgles and Bugman creepypasta. This page was apparently posting extremely graphic content and harassing children with crude messages containing land phrases or even coordinates. It's a whole separate rabbit hole by itself, but suffice it to say, the page no longer exists. Scare Theater's video brought a lot of attention to the image. Now known as either a Hanna Barbas Hennacide or dollthing.jpg. On a subreddit, a user claimed that it might have originated from 2channel, which is basically Japanese 4chan. The text, when translated, reads something along the lines of, You must post this image to another separate board within an hour. If you fail to do so, tragedy will find you before the year's end. People have seriously died from now reposting this. There's nothing that screams mid-2000s like scary chain letters. Anyways, users were eventually able to narrow down its original name as this. Which translates to Make Me Cute. It's said online that 2chan would host Make Me Cute threads, where users would take turns editing an image into eventually something horrifying. The earliest of these threads is currently from 2007, but some users and sources date back to as early as 2003. Many edits of the image exist online, but the original unedited version remains utterly missing. In late 2021, a Japanese YouTuber made a massive breakthrough in the search. According to this user, he received an archived 2chan post from one of his viewers and it contained this image. If we compare it to the Ahenna Barbas Hennacide image, it's a pretty close match. The hair is basically identical, the backgrounds are the same, and the noses are unedited. However, this still might not be the original image. The doll's right eye is oddly blacked out, and her mouth has teeth, which is uncommon, albeit not impossible, for these kinds of dolls to have. It's possible that the missing eye is just a sign of age, or a simple edit alongside the teeth that one 2chan user did. Given that many users recall seeing this image from before 2004, it's possible that an earlier version does exist. Until more information comes out, We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.